In Lewis theory, we represent valence electrons as dots. The valence electrons are important because those are the ones on the outside of the atom and those are the ones that are involved in bonding and chemical interactions with other atoms. So we represent the valence electrons as dots around the symbol of the element. And that's called a Lewis structure or a dot structure. Um, and sometimes they're called electron dot structures, and so I might slip and call them that, because every book I teach out of calls them something slightly different. Um, so let's remember from the previous chapter that the number of valence electrons for the main group elements, and those are the only ones we'll talk about here, um, are equal to the group number. So that's the, the A group numbers, 1A, 2A, 5A, 7A, except for helium. Helium and hydrogen, you know, they just have to be exceptions to everything. So let's look at the electron configuration for oxygen. We learned how to do this in um, the previous chapter. So if we find oxygen on the periodic table, we see that it's in period two, and it's over in the P block, and it's four into the P block. So it's going to end with 2P4. So it's going to start out 1S2, 2S2, 2P4. So how many valence electrons does oxygen have? Six. We can see that from the electron configuration. Two is the highest principal quantum number, n equals two. And there's two in the 2s, and there's four in the 2p, and that adds up to six. And I tend to abbreviate valence electrons as VE. VE is valence electrons, not victory in Europe. I don't even know if they teach you that anymore in school. So then the Lewis structure for oxygen is we take the element symbol and we put the valence electrons around it as dots. So we're going to put six dots. We tend to put them top and bottom, right and left. So I'm going to put four around, put them around singly first, and then pair them up. So that's the Lewis structure for oxygen. It's a little tilting to the left. It's okay. So in these Lewis structures, each dot represents a valence electron. We put those dots around the symbol with a maximum of two per side. So we've got top, bottom, left, and right. So you're going to have up to eight valence electrons. The exact location of them is not important. But it is, it is pretty important that you put them in singly first and then pair them up, especially when you're doing the online homework. Because mastering chemistry, as you have experienced, is very picky about certain things. Okay? So in mastering chemistry, let's just look at a couple of different ways to do oxygen. So in mastering chemistry, if you did your oxygen like that, it would not be happy. So that one's not good. If you did it like that, or like this, those are equivalent. You're just putting them in different places. You have two pairs and two singles. And so it doesn't matter. So what you draw on your paper may look a little different, okay? And that's, some people like that and some people that really bothers them. But it should, there should be one right answer. Well, there's not exactly one right answer here. Master in chemistry understands that the two on the right are the same and the one on the left is not right. So we've learned that atoms with Eight valence electrons are particularly stable. Those are the noble gases. And we call eight dots an octet. So if you're singing in a quartet, there's four people, right? An octet is eight people. An octet of electrons is eight dots on your Lewis structure. So everybody's trying to get eight dots. Okay, so let's look at the first elements and draw their Lewis structures. So how many valence electrons does hydrogen have? It only has one electron. It's got one valence electron. 
It doesn't matter if you put it on the top, the bottom, the right, or the left. Just put it in one place. Helium has two valence electrons. And this is one... We're not going to draw the Lewis structure of helium probably ever again. Um, helium actually does have those paired up. Because where are those electrons? They're in the 1s shell. They are paired. Lithium has three, so we're going to give it three dots. Beryllium has, I'm sorry, that's wrong. Lithium has one. Lithium has three electrons. It only has one valence electron. So lithium has one, beryllium has two, boron has three. Carbon has four. Nitrogen has five. So now there has to be a pair in one of those positions. It doesn't matter which position. Oxygen we've already done before. So you go one, two, three, four, five, six. Fluorine has seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, oh, I should have put it over here. Six, seven. And neon has eight. There, there are a couple of different reasons for putting them in the top, bottom, right, and left position instead of just making a random circle of dots around. It's a little bit like dice. When you put them top, bottom, right, and left, it's easy to look at it and see how many dots there are without actually taking your finger and counting them. Right? If you have eight in a circle, it's a little hard to just see that there's eight. But when we see two on top, two on bottom, two on right, two on left, it's, it's much easier to just say, oh, yep, yeah, there's eight. So neon has eight valence electrons. Neon's a noble gas. That's what all the other atoms are trying to get to. They're trying to get eight dots around them. Helium is also a noble gas, and helium is, is great with just the two electrons. We call that a duet. This is two electrons. Any questions about those? So Lewis theory is a bonding theory. And in, in Lewis theory, a chemical bond can be made in two different ways, by sharing electrons or by transferring electrons. Ionic bonds involve a transfer of electrons. A metal atom gives up one or more electrons and becomes a positive ion. A nonmetal atom gains one or more electrons, becomes a negative ion. The positive and negative charges are attracted, and that is an ionic bond. Covalent, look at that word. Co is the prefix meaning share, right? My four-year-old thinks that we should be co-sleeping. He falls asleep in my bed, and I take him to his bed, and I wake up later, and he's back in my bed. I just have to tell you this story. Last night, he fell asleep in my bed, and um, I fell asleep in Emily's bed with her. We, we play musical beds a lot. I got up later, and I see Andrew running back from the kitchen naked. <laughs> he had not gone to bed naked. I insist on, you have to wear chonies to bed, at least. And I'm like, hmm. So I go out to the kitchen, and I found his, his pants right next to the large puddle of pee. He had peed on the trash can. Pee all over the floor. At least I knew he wasn't going to wet my bed. So, yeah, he slept in the bed the rest of the night. So enjoy that story, you YouTube people. Um, Andrew's four, okay? But co means share, okay? Co-sleeping means you share sleeping. Covalent means sharing valence electrons. So a covalent bond is where two atoms share their valence electrons. And what we're going to use as a guiding principle here is called the octet rule that atoms are going to share or transfer electrons in order to get an octet of electrons, eight electrons. Of course, we have to have some exceptions. These are the little brothers, like Andrew. Um, hydrogen, lithium, and beryllium are going to follow the duet rule. They're going to try to be like helium with only two electrons. They're too small to handle eight electrons. So let's look at how these things will work. Here's an example. Let's write the Lewis structures for magnesium and sulfur. 
So magnesium has the symbol Mg, and sulfur has the symbol S. How many valence electrons does magnesium have? Two has two because it's in group 2A. Sulfur is in group 6A. How many valence electrons does sulfur has, have? Six. So you should have it, it, well, it doesn't work that way. Never mind, scratch that. Any questions about that?